Hello folks, welcome back. Good news, I've ordered my new chair so I won't be slowly moving down the screen. Um, I had this chair for 10 years, served its purpose. 10 years under the mask, that's pretty good. You're not here to hear about that, you're here. Again, if you take a look back there. That's the wall of wrestling. It's time to talk about some Monday Night Raw, mainly the Raw after Survivor Series. I'll tell you what, bravo, bravo WWE, you find that something right. But another person I have to give some bravos to, cover roll. It's good to hear back from you. You, sir, might be superior. And also, before I'm remiss about uh, remembering Survivor Series, um, for the most part, Iho del Vagabundo El Hobo, I think, got five out of seven matches right. Hmm. Let's see, where did he get? Well, he got the Stone Cold Lockdown, so that's point that was actually a fun match I'll give him that extra point mainly because again Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns was match of the night and Bobby Lashley was the Stone Cold Lock so wait a second Iho El Hobo Del Vagabundo Dos he's in the head of one John Levesque or Paul Levesque I'm sorry Paul Levesque and with all the thing is going out it's time to talk about some Monday Night Raw you know it's a WWE of course my Macho Man shirt is on and I'm very happy about that um, so it's off a little Team Smackdown promo it's good. Who's going to be the number one contender now for Drew McIntyre's belt? I mean, um, Drew McIntyre's or the tire. It was called Drew McIntyre's. That was terrible. Someone screwed up there. Someone was saying stuff in his ear. But we can forgive that for now. Um, Team SmackDown was there. They all make their own points why they should get their title shot. Except for Braun. Braun said... Give me my title shot. Give me what I want. But he's nowhere as near as cool as Batista when he says it. And he like threw Adam, and he just like headbutt Adam Pierce. And Adam Pierce, it looks like got a legitimate bruise on his head. Very, very poor show, Braun. You might be out of here one day. We'll see. We'll see if he goes to NAWA. Who knows? That's a show I might be going to in about a month. If things work out right and there's no more COVID death. Well, actually, Florida's been pretty stable about COVID death. It's all the places, like, it's weird. The whole East Coast got zonked. You, the New York's still a mess. The West Coast got kind of zonked, figured stuff out, and it's kind of moved to the Dakotas. But, again, minus some of the big cities. I mean, you might have a population of 400. A whole city might get wiped out in North Dakota because there's only, like, 400 people and well yeah you, you you can do the steiner math yeah so i don't know you just like attacked him that was weird okay going back to the nawa first match of the night it's because then there was a new day and hurt business promo that was really good this leads to a new day and hurt business match and then botch that referee was right he counted 10 but the ring announcer was wrong. And I'll, I'll get to that shortly. Uh, so it was New Day versus a Hurt Business. Woods was a little bit faster than Shelton Benjamin. But Shelton Benjamin, was, he's, he has his own quickness. He uh, hit, he picked a double leg takedown. Classic collegiate move. Then again, it came a near collegiate style match. Always good when I say when I see a wrestling match. Being a wrestling match versus either some sloppy brawl or, or some some flippy acrobatic show. 
Even though I do like that Lucha style of wrestling, the, the tie-ups, the headlocks, the takedowns, I'm still a purist at heart when it comes to that. Then Shelton, again, he, he slows that pace down. Smart wrestling. Don't wrestle at the pace of your opponent. You set the pace of the match. Uh, Kofi Kingston get the, get the, know, did get the hot tag. The flying tomahawk chop, and I can feel my seat going down ever so slightly. You'll see, you can tell from the top of my head, it will slowly sink down. You pain in about eight more days, I'll get a new chair, and I'll be happy. Oh, I have to put it together, though. Man, I still have that stuff to do. So much stuff to do. Yeah, I can tell now, because it's I'm measuring my head versus the door of wrestling. So yeah, it's going to be a long half hour show, I think. Um, <laughs> enough about that. Kofi does a flying tomahawk chop. Another one off the rope. Another tomahawk chop off the ropes. And the boom drop. And then Kofi, he just got dragged off the top rope. Ouch. And there was a botched ring call. Um, the way it was, Kofi was on the outside, so he was getting one. Two, so the ten count was being administered. Shelton Benjamin was kind of in the ring, um, and then it's like, oh, the ref's like, up oh, ten. No, you're, you've been counted out. Uh, Kofi Kingston screwed up his ankle somehow. I don't know how, but he did. So he did something to it because that did not. Again, getting dragged off the top the way he fell. And I, you know, I never realized how skinny the legs are on some of these wrestlers. Some of them are very muscular legs. Um, but I'll tell you what, you take a look at their ankle, their calf region. Whoa. They're really that, that freakishly genetic or freakishly big like they used to be. I mean, you think back to Hulk Hogan and when they wear the wrestling boots and just not shoes. I'll tell you what, those wrestling boots probably put on another five pounds, another inch and a half around their calf muscle. The gastronomist, the slowest combination. Because the other person has really skinny legs, I never noticed before until you like see him in like normal clothes. Is Oni Lorcan? I never tell that to him though. Yeah, he has skinny chicken legs, though. Chicken boy, chicken leg boy. Yeah, he 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 needed to eat more catering that night just just so that all the stuff could go to his legs. My own little thing. Cause I, I I've seen some women that have like bigger legs than he does. That's not good. I have a funny story about legs. Maybe I'll tell you that story in a couple months when I, for my three year. Wow, three years on the air. Jeez, I didn't think I'd make it one year. I impress myself Let's see here. Eight updates. Whatever. Um, so then, yeah, that was a botched ring count. And the announcer says, oh, and both have been counted at the double count out. It's like, no, Shelton Benjamin's in the ring. Kofi Kingston was counted out. Should be, it should have been a hurt business win by count out. Thankfully, MVP thought a little quick on his feet and said, no, 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 you're not going out like that. Do you want to be like that? Do you want to be a bunch of wussies that you are and have to win like, and have to have to keep your belts like that? Or do you want to be fighting champs? So, so I guess the New Day actually said, you know what? We better go finish the match the way it should be done. Uh, Kofi then gets back in the rings, uh, has a string of kicks. Always selling that leg though until Cedric Alexander comes in, grapes find the leg, gets him into a heel hook. Oh no, this was the Indian Deathlock. That's good to see. I really haven't seen the Indian Deathlock since the days of Wahoo McDaniels done properly. Not this like half assed, yeah, I'm just going to push against your legs. No, the full blown Indian Deathlock. That's, that's the way it should be done, the way Wahoo McDaniels used to do it. And the leg locks back in the day, like Shakespeare says, leg lock, put you in the headlock. Headlock, leg lock, yeah. Indian Deathlock. Amazing to see, especially used right, oh, like literally like, tears the ankles. It's the ankles, the knees, the bone, 
again, Indian Deathlock. You have a move called a Deathlock. That's a good wrestling move. And that's been around again since, oh geez, at least the late 60s, probably early 70s. And going back to Chief Wahoo McDaniels and Jay Strongbow, that's a long time. I do remember those matches. They were not young back then either. Then, let's see here. Kofi's leg's just getting wrecked. Uh, Kofi, he couldn't get a tag in because Woods was pulled off the ring. Uh, he does get an SOS, but only a two. Sweet count. I still remember that chant. I wonder if they have, when they have fans back, I wonder how many chants they'll actually remember. Or is it going to be kind of like generic, we have to get back into the flow of things. We'll see. Because um, remember, tables, ladders, and chairs is going to be at the trough. That's the baseball scene. So I wonder if they're going to... Ha- Only because I know with the Amway Center, they're going to start playing basketball soon. So I wonder if they're going to go there kind of for like the off baseball season. We'll see. Then I then they'll have to start touring. Well, yeah, they'll have to start touring again because Florida can only do so much. But come to Daytona Beach, you might actually fill up the stadium. Maybe I doubt it. I was there for the raw the live event. Again, you can see that little. I think it's right there. That's the rock card. That was pretty cool to see. I want to see Alicia Fox. No, not to be though. Darn. I'd help her. I'd get drunk with her. Oh, wait. No, I didn't say that. But, yeah. Um, Cedric, he just a straight chop right to the patella. Even even Samojo said that was uncalled for. Yeah, Samojo just healing it up some more. And then he applies the heel hook. Heel hook, that should be like an instant finisher. If you put a heel hook in right and tight, you're just going to tear stuff. Um, there are people in jiu-jitsu that like, they even like a hint, have a hint of a heel hook going in. Oh, I'm done. Then let's see here. Woods gets a hot tag, takes on takes out both guys. Woods, a two-for-one special. Shelton... Um, he ate a really slow motion Lucha Destroyer. Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of weird to see. But it was okay. The New Day retained their belt probably the way they should. Actually, if it wasn't for that one bad spot by Kofi. Actually, this was actually a really good match. I'll call it what it is. It was actually a surf and turf match. So then going into the break, you have Adam Pierce trying to do an interview in front of the medical facility there from the trainer's office at the Amway Center. Uh, Bobby Lashley says, hey, come over here, Adam. I have a couple things to, t- to ask you. Very civilized talk, I guess. He went there and come back from break. Orton's like, I'd like to talk to you too, sir. Then we had a Women's Survivor Series recap. Uh, Lana promo. And then Adam Pierce announces a tournament for tonight. And that's part of the matches, and that's going to... Ooh, I actually did get that. Wow. Daniel Sun, I am. Um, so we're going to have three matches. That's going to set up for a triple threat. Probably when Braun comes back, he'll probably interfere and make it a, a four-way threat um, next week, because... Yeah, it's next week. The... I just don't know when table ladders and chairs are. But that's okay. When, whenever I get to that, I get, I'll get to that. I'm not to get the freaking pink candles. That one was too big. So the next match we have uh, Matt. Uh, we have Riddle taking on Sheamus. Sheamus, a very technical match. This was actually another really darn good match. I was shocked. Um, normally you don't. Yeah, see, so you can tell I'm sinking because that because of where it's going. Very slowly, but it's just annoying. Uh. I was surprised. Sheamus is not known for having really good technical matches. He's known for more his brawling ability. But this was really technical. A lot of counter-wrestling. A lot of trade-to-submission holds. I like that. It's 
different. That's nice. It's nice to see Sheamus kind of opening up his arsenal. Um, you know, those they had the the new. Double X thing that the, the new uh, double double counters they were really good. Uh, Matt Riddell hit the Broton bomb, then they kind of went through the whole normal uh, routine. And I can tell now this is annoying me. Uh, Sheamus hit the ten belts, the Belfry. That was that was some good stuff. Matt Riddell had a Kimura on Sheamus, and oh the Al oh, Sheamus also had the Alabama Slam, which is always vicious looking. I don't care what she's doing. You just like whap a human being like that. That has to hurt. I'm trying to sit up straighter so this chair doesn't sink as much. It doesn't feel like it sinks as much. I can't wait till I get rid of this chair. It just got old. Kind of quit. Well, no, it's been gradually. It was the better of the two chairs and then it just got worn out. It's old. It's age. Father Time's undefeated. But yeah, uh, Seamus. He even uses a heel hook. I was shocked at that. Then he did the rolling. That roll, he rolled it somehow into a, a cloverleaf. I was amazed by that. I didn't realize he had it in him. Like, whatever surgery he had, like, fix up a lot of stuff. But it's good to see Sheamus back even better than he was as champion and much better than he was in the League of Nations. Jeez, that was terrible looking back at that. Then again, the amazing counter wrestling. Uh, Riddell actually uh, rolled up Sheamus, though. Riddell gets the win. Interesting. So, so Riddell's the first one in. I'll tell you what, I really can't complain about this match. It was I was shocked. If I'm shocked, you know that's a surf and turf match. And there's Lana and Asuka. Asuka's like, I accept challenge. I like challenges. Uh, then there's a Firefly Funhouse. Um, the Frog Friend was there. It's a new guest. Sis, uh, Abby the Witch was cursing. Who the... Are you? I like it when the puppets curse. That's just funny sounding. Especially Abby the Witch is the best at it. And then... Of course, Bray Wyatt says, Alexa, you know what you have to do to get rid of your friend. She, like, proceeds to kill the frog. And I'm like, wait a second. The only one that should die on the show is the rabbit. Why Why isn't the frog being eaten by Mercy the Buzzard? Or, or Oh, that would be so funny if they did, like, a toad-looking thing and Mercy the Buzzard is like, Hey, man, I'm seeing some funky colors, man. Your voice sounds so soft. And whoa, I can touch colors, bro. That would be funny. And it's also sick and deranged for me as well. But yeah, so this is going to lead eventually tonight. Nikki Cross versus Alexa Bliss, who's, who's way too cute and way too engaged. But yeah, well, we'll see what happens then. Oh, yeah, she doesn't go commando either. We'll get into that in a little bit. Then uh, the next match was Asuka versus Lana. Um, this was kind of short because Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler show up. And Lana just tried to roll up Asuka a few times. Asuka hit the near GTS on Lana. That, that uh, Lana. Uh, Asuka goes outside. She, she takes a bottle of water, like pours it. On Nia Jax and Shannon Pace, but that gets on the set. Nia headbutts to the stomach of Asuka. <clears throat> Therefore, Lana loses that match because she was disqualified because Asuka got attacked. Lana eventually saves Asuka. And we, and we kind of go to break. So, uh, and Lana translates Japanese, obviously. She speaks Russian. She she speaks fluent Japanese. She knows whatever Asuka says. That's that's good, I guess. Then we go to a little break. Um, Our truth is hawking merch until Drew Gulak shows up with the referee. Uh, the Fiend's music plays. Tazawa's in the Fiend. 
mask, and he seals a 24-7 pillow. is actually really good. And I guess he's like, dude, I'm getting paid to do this? Might as well. So then our next match was Lana and Asuka taking on Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. You can tell it's going because my head at one time was like up here. Yeah, the new Maddox. Ten years under the mast. That'll do it. Um, Nia Jax just tossed, uh, started this match off. Nia Jax tosses Lana around. Uh, the short, nasty, vicious short clotheslines to her. Shayna then does the stomp on the foot as Lana's trying to crawl away so she she's she stuck in the ring. Lana, poor Lana. Um, she stopped from tagging. She gets stopped from tagging in that, that neck crunch, that neck crank. That looked vicious. Um, again, the heels are doing a great job. Lana eventually gets the hot tag, which is always good. Um, there was no table spot this time, which is... Oh, there was no table... Wait, there was no table spot. Boo. I want to see the perfect 10. 10. 10 shows of the table spot. Maybe Lana's luck... Maybe she... I don't know. She did something backstage. She said, please, I'm sorry. Uh, the crying bow she had was amazing. Then Asuka gets in, she gets a hot tag. Uh, his nasty back elbow. It's great to see Shayna Baszler take that. The German suplex on the Shining Wizard. Uh, as Asuka went to go, go make a tag, now he yanks Lana off the ring. However, uh, Shayna Baszler was also distracted. By Lana's antics outside the ring, trying to get the, again the whole table spot ready. Asuka, event, um, so what happens? Uh, Shane and Baser puts the wrong person in the co in the coquina in the carafoon in, in the rear naked choke. I'm sick of trying to figure out what it's called. Puts Lana in the rear naked choke, but she's not the legal person. She just wanted to beat up Lana. Hey, let's all beat up on Lana. Hey, AJ Styles, let's beat up John Cena. That's pretty good. Let's beat up on Lana. That makes sense. And then, so with Shayna Baszler being distracted, Asuka rolls up Shayna, Lana, and Asuka win. Lana picks up another win. I'll tell you what, another fun match. Cheeseburger match. Then there was a Drew McIntyre recap. Um, about his match, so that was that was good. I mean, that was really the match of the night. I thought it was an underwhelming Survivor Series. I've heard mixed things about it. The men's match seemed terrible. Uh, women's match was a little bit. I've heard mixed things about the women's match. Um, I, I actually agree with the ending of that. Uh, the, the Street Profits New Day match was meh. Asuka Sasha Banks was good. Bobby Lashley destroyed Sami Zayn, so that's you, everyone knew that was going to happen. The Battle Royal is a Battle Royal, but Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns that actually that actually was 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 really well well built. So then our next match we have Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley. This was actually amazing because you see two really big one really big guy in Keith Lee taking on a very very strong guy, Bobby Lashley. And um, Bobby Lashley tried to outmuscle Keith Lee. That wasn't going to happen. And that's kind of like the whole story of this match is that Bobby Lashley tried to do his power moves on Keith Lee that always works on smaller people. Keith Lee's not a small person, though. Uh, again, it was nice. It was, uh, Keith Lee was no selling shoulder tackles, as he properly should be. Uh, Bobby was eating those, those chops and elbows in the corner. Uh, Lee eventually eats a flatliner. It's sent to one corner. Uh, Lashley got low bridge. It goes over the top rope. MVP distracts Lee. MVP, Lee does not like that. Bobby. I couldn't believe this, but Bobby Lashley managed to pick Keith Lee up, even in, in, even in a fireman position, fireman's carry position, and ran him into the post. 
the fact that anyone could pick up a man as big as Keith Lee. Granted, Keith Lee let him pick him up. If he didn't want to go, he wasn't going to go. But that was amazing. That's the old Andre the Giant story with the power slam. If Andre didn't want you to power slam, if Andre didn't want you to body slam, he, you were not body slamming Andre. He let Hulk Hogan. This guy knows he could have squashed Hulk Hogan. But again, that was what everyone was a Hulkamaniac, though. So. Uh, and back in the ring, Bobby looks like his knee gave out for a second. Um, Lee delivers more forearms. Lee gets it together. Bobby, he did suplex Keith Lee, and that looked amazing. Um, then Bobby was bleeding somewhere. I think he fell into the post. It looks like his knee kind of like buckled a little bit, but not bad enough. Just enough, and you can really see the pneumatics failing now. But yeah, it was just enough where he got, because it was a weird cut. You're going to blade. It's going to be like over here. This was like really on the side of his head. So it looks like he caught something funny. But because the referee had the black glove on, I'm like, huh? Who's bleeding? They're not going to juice in the smash. Things happen in a wrestling match. That's okay. Yeah, now it's getting low. Yeah, it's just losing air over like course of an hour. A half hour. Old chair. But still somewhat comfortable chair. Except for it gives me a waffle butt. But, yeah, Lee, um, again, he could outpower Bobby Lashley. However, MVP, or Lee pounced Bobby Lashley. That was amazing. MVP made the save. Um, Keith Lee wins by DQ. That looked pretty good. I'll tell you what. There we go, and I'm back to the height I should be at for now. Then the next match was Alexa Bliss taking on Nikki Cross. Alexa was kind of toying with Nikki, kind of running around her. I'm having way too much fun every time. And this was picked up by a couple people. Every time Alexa Bliss fell, she wasn't wearing typical wrestling bottoms on. She had like on black spandex. Vince just won't let her go commando, I guess. Who knows? So yeah, it really gives that it's it's a really it's that near creepy, way too young girl like vibe, and it does get kind of creepy. You're like, ugh, but yet you see her face, and 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 you know she's twenty four, twenty five, but yet she looks like a sixteen year old high school kid, and you're like, ugh. Nikki Cross is Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is still amazing. Uh, Nikki Cross and stomps Alexa. A couple of short close lines. Nikki's being vicious. She's trying to beat the fiend out of Alexa. Uh, she ran Alexa's head into the mat. Like, up! Oh! And the way... I can't even do the accent the way she does it. And then Alexa starts to cry. And Nikki's like, oh, I'm sorry I had to hit you. It's like, it'll be okay. And then Alexa tricked Nikki, uh, hit like a flatliner because it wasn't a full-blown Sister Abigail, but it was enough to get the pin. Alexa Bliss won. The thing that made this match really good is the character work by Alexa Bliss and the emotion shown by Nikki Cross. Both amazing talents. This is a cheeseburger match. Then a little bit more of the Undertaker tribute. It was okay. Again, I was there at the actual WrestleMania in Orlando when he was when he left his gear in the ring. He's just been holding on. Hey, you know what? Vince gives me eleven dollar eleven million dollars to fly to Saudi Arabia. Vince could give me ten thousand dollars to fly to Saudi Arabia. I'd be there. Although maybe not now, but yeah, I would have been there for only ten thousand dollars. Actually, I, I'd, I'd be there for $1,000. Yeah. Um, then we have our main event of the evening. It's Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. The phenomenal one versus the Viper. Uh, this was really fun. AJ starts by a series of roll-ups. He wants to get this match done and over with. The longer this match goes, the more it favors the more methodical pacing of uh, Randy Orton. 
Uh, Randy Orton, though, hits a big European uppercut and then just stomps on AJ. Orton's like mastered the stomp. Uh, AJ eventually does the cross chops. Again, vintage New Japan AJ style is always good to see. Um, he drives Orton actually onto the table. That was nice. He took that classic Orton move and used it against him. AJ then goes to work over Randy Orton's leg. He, he's twerking that knee. And Randy Orton must just be flexible. Because I'll tell you what, the way he was twerking and twisting that whole lower leg. Ouch. That did not look natural. And again, I know they have ways and angles to make it look utterly amazing and look absolutely painful without, without anything happening. But still... AJ Styles and Randy Orton are true masters of their craft. Uh, Randy then, then boots, his, boots his way out. He also does very straight eye poke to AJ Styles. Any classic Randy Orton stuff. Um, he does that that step back, back, step back, back breaker, which looks great. AJ Styles did get Randy Orton into the calf crusher. Uh, Orton, he like you could see him reach for the ropes, and once his fingers got that rope, he, he had that death grip on the rope. That was great. AJ went off the ropes, tried to hit something. Orton changed, uh, counter signs to a po power slam. Uh, he goes to the outside, uh, and the fiend shows up. And the fiend's literally hiding behind the barricade. And they could have done a little bit better because the fiend just like pokes his head out, and you can literally see him just like kind of poke his head down. And, like Randy's like, huh? Where'd he go? It's like, Randy, he's right there. He can't disappear. He's just hiding. Like, just kind of look a little bit over and, and down, and, and you'll see him. Trust me on this. Uh, but again, eventually, Orin did get AJ back in the ring, had the draping DDT. AJ kicks out because AJ is too sweet. Uh, AJ does hit the phenomenal forearm because Randy Orton's like terrified of, what's, of where the fiend's going to be. He just keeps on looking for him. Again, the distracted wrestler syndrome. AJ Styles hits the phenomenal forearm, pins Randy Orton. Really great match. And the way the show went out was the best because it went out like at 10 59 30. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing missing were like the projection of bugs on the mat. But again, this was another really good match. This was a surf and turf match. And I'll tell you what, for, for being after Survivor Series, WWE really stepped up their game because this overall was a surf and turf show. And that's it for a Monday Night Raw. Um, schedule for this week. Because it's Thanksgiving, it's, it's going to be kind of weird and wonky. Um, tomorrow, I am going to be live streaming. I'll be live streaming, again, the Impact Wrestling show like I always do. Wednesday, I am going to watch. And I may or may not make a show on Wednesday. It all depends what AEW does. If they do, like, a best of show. I, I I probably won't make a video on it. Uh, we'll have to see Wednesday. Thursday. Oh. Oh, then Thursday. Thursday we'll have some Daytona Beach bum fight wrestling going on. I have the card right here. Um, we'll see, of course, Core for Tom. We'll have um, an international mix for the always underweight division. The women of the Daytona Beach bum fight league. And somehow I managed to get the, some women from... The women of the WWE Rumble. Impressive. The Hit Club versus the White Family. The Battle of the Families. Um, the Cuba Connection. I don't know. I don't know if they'll be featured. Maybe I might give them a break. They had a tough match. Last time. Then Old Tom versus two, two old bastards. The old Tom versus Jake the Snake Roberts. And we'll, and we'll see what happens. Now, that'll be up on Thursday. 
Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, I might take off too. Only because I have to work. I have to wake up at 5 a.m. I might be going over to a I, I'll, I'll be going over to a friend's house that day as well. So I probably won't get back in time to do the wrestling show. Although, I don't know. We'll see. It might be a Friday night, or I might do it Saturday morning. I don't know. I'll figure that out then. And that's it. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment.